So here's a rather challenging gas law problem. So we have this gas that's contained in this cylinder and there's this uh, movable piston which we're told has negligible mass and there's a spring connected to the ceiling. So what happens here is the gas is heated up, it goes from a starting temperature of 30 degrees Celsius to a final temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and the gas expands but it's expanding against a spring and we know the spring constant of this spring is 3,500 uh, newtons per meter. Um, so the spring is going to be exerting a pressure uh, on the gas. If the, if the spring were not there, um, the pressure of the gas would have stayed at one atmosphere um, because it would be expanding against nothing. So, uh, but, it, but it's expanding against the spring, so the spring is basically exerting a force this, uh, this, arrow, this vector here represents force of spring. Um, as the gas pushes up, the spring pushes down. Um, so the force of the spring is causing the pressure of the gas to increase. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, so I, I labeled here condition one, condition two. Um, we're given the starting pressure uh, before the gas begins to heat up. We're told that the, uh, the initial pressure when this piston is down here, uh, the pressure is one atmosphere, which is 101,300 pascals. We're given the starting volume, so I'm going to shade this area here. This area that I'm shading is the, um, the starting volume, which is 0 0.004 cubic meters. And then the starting temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. And for gas law problems, you always want to be in Kelvin. So you add 273 to get to 303 Kelvin. All right, for condition two, we don't know pressure two, although it's going to be greater because the gas is, is pushing into the piston and the piston, I'm sorry, the spring is pushing back. So there's going to be an increase in pressure. We don't know the ending volume. Um, the ending volume is going to be equal to the starting volume plus this increase in volume, what I'm shading right there. Um, the volume increases by that amount. And then the final temperature is 250 degrees Celsius, which we put into Kelvin. All right, so let's start by talking about P2 and V2. So the second pressure, P2 for the second condition, when the gas heats up to 250 degrees Celsius, it's going to be equal to P1, which is the starting pressure, the pressure before the gas was heated, plus the pressure exerted on the gas from the spring. Now here what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the definition for pressure. The basic definition for pressure is force over area, where this would be uh, the force of the spring. Um, the spring is exerting a force down on the gas, and pressure is force over area. All right, so P2 is going to be equal to P1 plus force of spring over the area of the piston. All right, we're going to plug in another equation here. This is why physics is viewed as challenging. Just a lot of, a lot of things to pay attention to. Um, the equation for force of spring is K, now, now we've learned it in class as K times X, and it's actually negative KX. The negative just means um, that the force is opposite the displacement. Um, but here, the distance the spring is compressed is H. So the force of the spring is KH, and we're not going to put the negative in there. Um, we're just going to look at this as an absolute value. So, writing this one more time, P2 is going to be equal to P1 plus KH over A. And we know K and we know A. We're given the area of this piston. The area of the piston is 0 0.015 meters squared. All right, so just one more time. So P1 is, a, is 101, 300 pascals, and then this is going to be equal to uh, K is 3,500 newtons per meter, 
uh, H is what we're looking for, and then A is 0 0.015 meter squared. So this is our expression for P2. All right, V2. Uh, V2 is the volume of this whole thing. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to box it here. It's the volume of this whole area. So the gas expands. Um, so the, the volume of this whole thing is equal to V1. Now V1 was this area down here. That's the volume of the gas before expanding. Um, and then plus this shaded area up here. So this shaded area up here is going to be equal to the area of the piston multiplied by H. If you take the area of this piston and multiply by how high the piston rises, uh, that gives us the change in volume of the gas. So you add the change in volume of the gas to the starting volume and you have the new volume. All right, so this is our expression for V2. Okay, so um, the gas law that applies here, um, the way I teach this in class is you always start with uh, PV equals NRT. Um, so this is a condition one, condition two type of problem. In this, in this problem here, N remains constant and R remains constant. So bring T over to the other side. So PV over T is equal to NR, and NR is constant. So this gives us the gas law P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Okay, so from here what we're going to do is plug in our values. Now we want to be in pascals and cubic meters because we, we want this H value to come out in meters. Uh, so in order for that to happen, we want to be in pascals, which is our metric unit for pressure. We want volume to be in cubic meters. So I'm going to plug into this equation here. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to hit a quadratic. So um, I'm just going to get it to the point where we have the quadratic set up and um, let you do the math yourself. Okay, so P1 is 101,300 Pascals, V1 is 0 0.004 cubic meters, T1 is 303 Kelvin, okay? Uh, P2, all right, so P2, we're going to plug in, uh, let's put brackets here, 101, 300 Pascals plus... 3,500, so I'm plugging in this value here for P2, 3,500 newtons per meter times H over 0 0.015 meter squared. Uh, and then times V2, which is V1 plus AH. Okay, so as you can tell, the algebra is going to get a little bit tedious. This is definitely harder than what you would get on a multiple choice test. This, this would be more of a, a, a difficult free response problem. Okay, T2 is 523. So the, um, the basic setup is done. From here, it's math. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up so I get some room. I'm going to erase all this, so hopefully you've copied that. All right, so moving along, um, the algebra here simplifies down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, deal with this part. I'm going to simplify these four values. I'm going to multiply both sides by 523, and this comes out to be 699.41. Uh, that's these four values that I have circled um, simplified equal to, all right, so what this becomes is 1013, I'm going to leave units off here, plus uh, 233,333.3 H times 
0 0.004 plus 0 0.015 H. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to uh, distribute this, or not distribute, but what do we call it? What's the math term for this? Foil it. We're going to foil this. We go boom, 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 boom. And the quadratic you're going to end up with, I'm skipping some steps here just to shorten this video, um, but you can, you can do this math. Um, when you have the quadratic ready to go, you have 3,500 H squared plus 2,452.83 H minus 294.21 equal to zero. So this is quadratic. Uh, your A is 3,500, your B is 2,452, and your C is negative 294.21. So H is going to give two values. Uh, there's going to be a positive value and there's going to be a negative value. Um, to be honest, I did not solve for the negative value, but that's not the answer. H cannot be negative. Um, the positive value comes out as 0 0.104 meters, which is uh, 10.4 centimeters. And that's the answer to the first question. So for the second question, we're asked to find uh, the pressure of the gas at 250 degrees Celsius, which is uh, condition 2 down here. So basically, we are looking for P2, for pressure 2. Uh, I'm going to show two possible ways to do this. Um, the first way is the quicker way, um, but it, it just has to do with what we wrote already here. So in part 1, we said that pressure 2, which is the pressure of the gas after the gas has been heated and the gas pushes into the spring, and therefore the spring pushes back, and so the spring is exerting a force. Draw an arrow here. So this vector here, again, this represents the force of the spring pushing down on the gas. Um, and that, that exerts a pressure on the gas. So pressure 2 is equal to pressure 1, which was, which was the pressure of the gas before um, the gas started to heat up, uh, plus the added pressure from the spring. So um, what we're going to do, oh, I have the same thing written twice here. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in the definition for pressure, just like we did in part one. Pressure is force over area. So, um, so this is going to be P1 plus uh, force of spring over area. And then the next thing we substitute in, force of spring is going to be K times h. h is the distance um, that the spring is compressed. So we have p1 plus kh over a. Uh, in the first part, in the first calculation up here, we figured out that h, now we want to use an unrounded value here. Uh, rounding could really mess us up. So h came out to be 0.104 Three nine five seven. That should be good enough uh, meters. So that's our H. We're going to plug that in here. We know what K is and we know what A is. So uh, so solving for P two, we get. Um, I'm just plugging in right here into this. So P one is a hundred and one thousand three hundred pascals. You have to be in pascals here. Plus uh, the spring constant, which is thirty five hundred newtons per meter. H is 0 0.1043957 and the area of the piston is 0 0.015 meter squared. So this gives us a, a pressure of um, 125,000 659, or somewhere, I think that's what it comes out to be. If not, it's close to that. Uh, Pascals. So that is P2. And then we can convert that 
to atmospheres. So let me do that real quick. 125, 659. So uh, converting to atmospheres, that'd be 1.1.24 1. atmospheres. So all I did is I divided by, I took this and divided by 101,300 pascals to convert that into atmospheres. Okay, the second way we could find P2, um, there's a second possibility. So I'm going to erase this, make some room. Um, what, what we could do is use a, a gas law. We, we could say P1V1 equals P2. Wait, what am I doing here? P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Uh, I derived this earlier in the video, so I won't, I won't derive it again. Um, and then we can rearrange this and solve for P2. P2 is equal to P1V1T2 over T1V2, just doing algebra. Now we still have to find V2, but we're able to do that now. So looking down here, I explained this already, uh, the, the final volume V2 is equal to the starting volume plus the, uh, the increase in the volume, which is A times H. So V1 was 0 0.004 cubic meters. Uh, the area of the piston is 0 0.015 meters squared. And then H, again, we found out was, and we don't want to round it, 0 0.1043957 meters. So this gives us a V2 of... Where did I put it? Um, zero, zero point zero zero five five six. So I'm not rounding. Five five six five nine three six cubic meters. So we figured out what V two is. So now we plug in up here. We have all our data here. P one V one T two. We got everything. So I'm just going to let you guys plug this in. Um, the key thing was solving for V2. V2 goes right there. Here's our P1. Here's our V1. Here is our T1. Uh, P2 we're solving for. V2 is there. And then T2 is there. So you plug this in and you get uh, the same answer. 125,000 uh, of 659. Uh, Pascals. So that's two possible ways to have found uh, pressure two.